Let's go before God, who still has much to tell his children. He is happy that you have surrendered unto him. Your record has reached heaven that you have surrendered to Jesus. Your name has entered into the book of life that you have surrendered to Jesus. And so the Lord has sent word for you, his child, good relationship with God, the Lord has sent word for you. Say, Lord, speak, I'm hearing. Open your mouth and talk to the God of heaven. Lord, speak, thy servant, hear it. Lord, speak, thy servant, hear it. Now you are a child of God. Now God is talking not to a sinner, but to a child of God. The Lord wants your relationship with him to be solidified. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty Father, we have come to hear that which you are speaking to children, those you have by your grace delivered from darkness and transformed, translated into your marvelous light. Blessed be God. Speak and graciously Grant your children to hear and grant your children to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Reject conformity to the world and to date or lukewarm church. In Romans chapter 12, I read verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The Lord says, let's read from verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God that ye present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. Be ye, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God has done something for you. The work of saving you from sin was a great work that required the power of God. Sin helped, I mean, held you in captivity, held you in bondage, just as the children of Israel were held in captivity in Egypt. And the Lord said, Pharaoh will not let you go except with mighty power. Except I stretch forth my hand in power. Get ready. Pharaoh will let you go. And then he manifested his power. And he said, now I'm going to take a step. And that step, Pharaoh will just trust you out. I believe the Lord has done some series of things in your life. And... You have been set free. You have been set free from the power of sin. You have been set free from the power of Satan. Because when Satan gets his prey, he does not want to release it. When Satan gets hold of you, 
He does not want to release you, except the power of God is involved. And I trust the Lord has released his power and broken the yoke of Satan in your life and given you liberty. He brought me also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock. Yes, he put a new song in my mouth and established my ways. So I praise the Lord. I rejoice with you that came here a sinner, but now you're born again. Your name has entered into the book of life. The Lord has justified you. The Lord has said unto you, I have forgiven your sins. Your past life I will remember no more. Congratulations to your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. Now, the children of Israel had come out of the land of Egypt, had crossed the Red Sea. Now they were now to walk to the promised land. But what was required of them was their own obedience. As for power, power was manifested against the, their enemies to let them go. Pharaoh matter is settled. What was required now was their own obedience. As for the power of sin, the Lord has settled with it. What is required now is your own obedience. Many among the children of Israel could not make it to the promised land, not because of Pharaoh, but because they did not obey God's word to maintain relationship between them and God all through the wilderness walk. So now that you have come out of sin, what the Lord expects is your own obedience. What he is saying now is what you can do for yourself. He has done what you could not do. Now, do what you can do. So salvation has two parts. One, God's work on you. Two, your work on yourself. God's work on you. Then, your work on yourself. Now, I am talking about your work on yourself. He said, don't be like this world anymore. Change your character. Change your thoughts. Change your mind. Refuse to think the way you used to think. Refuse to reason the way you used to reason. Before this time, as a young lady, you thought that when you expose your tie, people will see your beauty. People can now be attracted to you and marry you. That thought, change it now. It was not a true position. Change that thought. That is what the Lord is saying. And to change that thought is your responsibility. You just a thought, I won't think it that way again. I refuse to think that way. Before this time, as a sinner, you were a thief. You thought you would find no job any longer. That you would not get food to eat except you stole. But now, change that thought. Many eat and drink. How many hired servants of my fathers have enough to eat and drink? I am perishing in this business. So, change that thought. That you can have enough from God. Enough provision by God to sustain your life. And to make progress in this life. Before this time, as a sinner, you used to think that power is acquired from herbalists and witch doctors. Power is with the witches and the wizards. That 
is why you were pursuing power in that direction. Now, change that thought. That is a wrong thought. The creator cannot have more power than the creature. Humans cannot have more power than God. The source of the power of man that does not know God is Satan. The source of the power of man that knows God is God. Satan cannot measure with God. Therefore, satanic power cannot measure with God's power. Satan is not a generous man. He is not a lover and cannot give you the power that will deliver you from him. No. But God, who is a father, the father of creation, will give to his own children the power that supersedes Satan. Oh, I, as I'm sitting, standing here now, I have power that supersedes Satan's power. <laughs> Satan is an outdated man. You hear? He is outdated, but I am new arrival. I say I am what? God just did it in me fresh. Satan is outdated. All model. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, how, many, how many new models are here? Your new model of power. <laughs> Your new model. Your own just, God just made you. Not, not the one of 6,000 years ago. That one is outdated. I'm talking about that one. He has even left heaven. He doesn't understand it again. I'm talking about power. Ye shall receive power. Behold, I give unto you power to trade upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. God has put you stupid over the devil. I say you are over the devil. Your power is superior to power of witches. Your power is superior to power of wizards. Your power is superior to power of occultism. Hallelujah! Hey. And this power is moving fresh. I had a story about two weeks ago. I've been telling people, do you want it also? Do you want this story also? Hmm. The story has two parts. Yes. And uh, the first part, in fact, both the first and second part, the pastor is here. Pastor Durison, are you here? Is he in work anywhere? He, he can tell the story better. But I will tell you this. Number one, our pastor, he's a chapter, he's a chapter leader in Lagos. His daughter, who just qualified for NYSC, 25 years old, was inflicted by the power of witchcraft some more than a month ago but i don't know whether it's up to two months something entered into her and was moving in her body this thing caused her to faint regularly they took her to the hospital tried in lagos he could not walk. Then, how many of you know that Horemo has a hospital? Oh, you know Horemo has a hospital. That's what, that hospital is a serious one. You hear? Both Jesus and the things Jesus created are working in that hospital. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the mother now said, I am going to Horemo Hospital and I know that Jesus will heal my daughter. They all arrived. Maybe this is it up to three weeks now. They all arrived. And when they arrived in the night, well, they had not seen the doctor yet. While sleeping on the hospital bed given to them, the, 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 the lady had a dream. In her dream, 
She saw as if she came to a wedding place. And wedding was going on. And the announcement that came from the loudspeaker said, If you allow her, and she steps her feet into the camp, you have lost her. The owner will take over her. You can't find her anymore. If you allow her and she step her feet into the camp, you have lost her. The owner will take over. Then suddenly, it, uh, they were sharing food. So she was waiting for her portion of food in the dream. Again, the scenario changed to prayer warfare that was going on. It saw, she saw that they were praying on for her. The prayer warriors were praying for her. Suddenly, in her dream, she saw a movement in her body. And that, in that movement, something, ah, she, she woke up from sleep. Am I, is it my menses? But I had had my men menstruation just a few days ago. She checked, it was not menses. So she went back to lie down. And again, the dream continued. If you allow her to step into the, into the camp, you have lost her. Then, it was as if prayer warriors were praying for her. Again, that movement started in her body. She jumped up. And the movement continued. Then, it descended to her personal body, uh, uh, the woman's body. Then, uh, she put her hand into and touched something. What is this? She brought it out. It was a live weevil that came out of her body. I was walking on the ground. Hallelujah. Jesus has removed it. Jesus has removed it. Amen. She had come to the camp of Jesus and Jesus has removed it. Oh, divine. All the devil has put into your body. You are in the camp of Jesus. I say you are in the camp of Jesus. Whatever Satan has put into your body, let it say come out. I say come out by the power of the Lord Jesus. I command that thing. Get out from my body. By the authority of Jesus, I rebuke that by the Spirit. Get you out from their body. You are in the camp of Jesus. Amen. I didn't prepare for the story else they would have shown you the weaver moving on the ground that came out of the body. Then, the mother told another story to our shock. He said, there's somebody in Lagos now who is in their church, a member of Horemo. This man was a very rich man. Hallelujah. But the enemy inflicted him with a sickness. He labored with all labor to get it cured. It didn't work. He did all, went to Wabali's hospital, all until he went to America. All struggling for this sickness to be gone. It didn't work. So he was directed to a high, a high spiritist. Is that spiritualist or spiritist, whichever one. A body of, of spirit, spirit, I mean, demonic people that treat sickness. So they told him, we will travel into the realm of the spirit to treat you, to get you loose from the power that binds you. Give us 250,000. We will go and do it. But, if we are not able to do it, we will tell you and give you back your money. So, he gave them the money. And upon a set day, he came back to hear the result. They looked at him and said, oh, we saw that your case is tied to a great, strong, and high power in the principality and power kingdom satanic kingdom so there's no way it's 
stronger than us. You can't go to any hospital in this world. You can't go to any herbalist in this world. It's, un it's not possible. Here back is your money. 250,000. This man now, to him is death that has come. Nowhere, so I'm dying. So I'm dying. How sympathetic he had looked before the spiritualists. How is it that it drew the pity of one of them that went, that, was, that sympathized with him to still get him out of his case? Being spiritualists, they know the source of power. They know where real power is. Since they're dealing with power, principality and power in high places. So, one of them asked him, do you know holiness revival movement? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Clap the hand, clap it, clap it. Rise up and clap it, clap it. Glory, clap it. Glory to God, clap it. Hey, clap your hand there, clap your hand there. Clap it, clap it. I say stand up and clap your hands. Hey. Hey, hey, glory to God, glory to God. That is God. That is what the Lord wants you to hear. That is what the Lord wants you to know. The Lord wants to tell you he's among us. God is among us. God is among us. The living God is here. 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 Holiness revival movement. Holiness revival movement is the ministry of God. Is the ministry of God. The Lord Himself is in His holy temple. The Lord Himself is in His holy temple. Amen. You are free and permitted to sit down. Glory to God. The man said, I have never had that name. He said, go and look for them and join them. When you join them, remain there quiet and patiently. Your matter will be over. Hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter thy throne O Lord is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness, righteousness, and hatest wickedness. Hallelujah! Therefore, God, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Therefore, God, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Sit down. Yeah. The man looked for holiness, revival movement, and somebody looking for medicine. And somebody looking for drugs, recommended. He got it. He got the holiness movement. I said he got the holiness movement. Hallelujah. 
And he was brought to the international headquarters, international conference of holiness, revival movement about two years ago. He came with that sickness that they say higher spiritual power has arrested him. Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Jesus. I love thy name. I love thy name. Hallelujah. Jesus. Blessed Jesus. There is no other name I know. The power of the Lord descended from heaven. And broke those things in that man. Set him free. The man now is back to business. He's dealing with cement in, in Lagos. The Lord has set him free from that power. The Lord broke his yoke. He is set free because the power of God is the power of God. The power of God. Everybody call the power of God. Power of God. Power of God. Power of God. Superior to every power. There's no name given under heaven among men. Where both we shall be saved is the name of Jesus. And that name is moving on. That name is here. The Lord is among us because we are holiness. We love holiness. We preach holiness. We teach holiness. We live holiness. That's why the Lord has anointed us and has given us anointing above our fellows because of anointing and because of holiness. That man is today set free. You are going to hear his testimony in December. He will come himself and say, I am the one I met with satanic group that delivered me by sending me to holiness, revival, movement. Hallelujah. Amen. You are before Jesus himself. Holiness pays. Holiness exalts. The Lord hears the prayers of the holy. That is the secret. It's not business we're doing here. It's not law. It's reality. We serve God with pure conscience. We serve God with truth. Not that there are no hypocrites. There are, as even where in the days of Jesus, right in among, among the apostles of Jesus. But Jesus was righteous. He taught his disciples righteousness. The anointing of God was upon him. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing them, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God is with us because of his holiness. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Be not conformed to this world. Now that you have come to God, Change your mind. Change your heart. Because you have come to the holy place. In Genesis chapter 35. From verse 1. Genesis chapter 35 verse 1 to verse 5. The Bible tells us. Say. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God, that appeared unto thee when thou fledest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. That is what the Lord of the Holy God is the one that called you. Put away your charms. Put away your idols. 
Change your clothes. Change your clothing. Change your appearance. Remove your dreadlocks. Remove those demonic hair on your head. Remove your attachment, your withdrawal, those unnatural things that you brought upon yourself. Remove, yeah, those shabby hair that you put upon your head and looking mad. Change your garments. All those jeans that are torn that you wear about as a, as a mad person. The God of heaven is the one that has called you. The Holy God is the one that has called you. Change your garment. Change your character. Change your attitude. Change your mind. You were thinking before that when you dress that way, you will be a star. You will be a star in satanic kingdom. Satan will take glory over you, and he's not your creature, a creator. But God, the creator, said, no, you're giving me shame. I didn't create man in that way. You're abusing my, crea my creative power. You're abusing it. You're provoking me. You're belittling me. Could I have made mad people like that? And saw them and say I, it was good. You didn't you hear that I, I saw my creation and say, behold, it is very good. Is it like this? Is it like you? Is it like you? Change that painting you are doing to yourself. Remove those things you put in your eye, eyelids, air eyebrows. Remove those things. He said, please remove them. Change your mind from thinking that they make you a star. Let them think that they make you hellish. They prepare you for hell. So, that is what the Lord is saying. He said, my, most, Jacob told them, the God of holiness is the one we are going to serve now. The God of holiness is the one that says, come to me. I meet you up in Bethel. Remove those things. The earrings in your ear. The, the source of it is from Satan. The source of it actually came from idol worshippers. Whatever they're saying today, even if you met it yourself, the, the spirit of that thing came from Satan. When God met a woman in the garden, perfect, and loved her, there was no earring on her ears. When God, up to now, gives a baby girl as a witness of condemnation to every woman that wears earrings, he never gives a baby girl with a, with a puncture in her ear, prepared for earrings. Nothing like that. There, was whole, there are two holes in every baby girl to sh say she must breathe. There's a mouth in that baby girl because it's going to eat. There are two puncture in her ear. The sides of her head as ears, none puncture in the sides of the ear for hearing. He said, you are abusing my creation. You think I didn't think it? It's not for you. It's Satan that wants to, to abuse the temple of God, whose temple ye are. Therefore, remove those things. Remove them. Whoever is giving you another interpretation doesn't know God. It's not of God. It's from Satan. He doesn't know the truth. Although he may be in the church and has written book or books, commentary. He has not known this God well. I'm telling you what God is saying. Yes. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to verse 8. The Bible also tells us this saying. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you, 
through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of this world of the world and not after Christ i think god has accepted you already your name has entered the book of life as new arrivals but this is what god says is in your portion to do it is in your portion accept the world be rooted in the world belong to this world read this world listen to sound preaching of this world practice it be a doers of this world and not hearers only so you see that is what the lord is calling you to do now you do it yourself the powder you are painting yourself the women that wear those things that painted those things were looking for men they wanted to be attractive to men the painting you're doing to your eyes to yourself is to come out attractive God says, you are spoiling my nature. You are spoiling what I did in my perfect wisdom. You are abusing it. That thought, change that thought that tells you you are not okay until you paint. Change that thought that says you are not okay until you put strange here. Change that thought that says Africans are not complete until they put Indian here. They put Chinese here. They put American here. They put the European here. Change that thought. Because the God that created the people in Europe, he created the people in Africa. The God that made people in those parts of the world, he made people in this part of the world that we should all spell out his glory. And don't destroy your own glory in their sight. Don't make those people to feel proud as if they're higher creatures. You are the one that is making them to belittle the creatures of God in Africa because you're learning to be like them. You are trying to tell them that they're superior creatures. None of them is more superior to anybody. None in the world is superior to Pastor Paul Rica that is found in Nigeria. I say I am the perfect make of God, perfect creature of God, wonderful creature of God, wonderfully made. I, listen, listen. People should come from abroad and be looking at, where is that man that the Lord met in Nigeria? Where is his house? Where is his place? People of all color, people of all skin should be coming to look for me. And I will say, oh Lord, to you be glory. And you, you, you are spoiling the name of the Lord. You are spoiling the name, the thing God did in Africa by telling them that we are, you know, we are, we are inferior creatures. That until we change our hair to be like theirs, we change our skin to be like them. The Lord, will, the Lord is angry with you. You are abusing creation. You are abusing creation. You are telling God that He's an unequal God. That He made some people better than others, and that's a challenge against God. I, everybody, shout! I repent. Go and do it. Remove those things from your body. All artificials. All artificials. To resemble which people? To resemble which people? And some of you, it is Satan himself you want to resemble by having horns on your head. By having some type of fearful teeth. By building satanic structures into your life to abuse God. You will perish with the devil. Change your mind. That mind is devilish. Change your thought. Change it. So when I am in the airport inside the plane, I hear some of these, uh, uh, the, 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 I hear some of them. They, they begin to say language that they are Nigerians. I'm sitting in the plane. I'm not hearing what they're saying. I said, you are in Nigeria here. You can't speak in the language I will hear you. You are picking Af American language. You are picking the white man's language. Which I cannot hear. Who told you that the white man has better language like my own tribal language? My brother, who told you that the white man has a better language than your tribal? Hallelujah. 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 People have to change your mind. I said, change your thought. Everybody say, change your thought. Say it again. Say, my, I will change today. In fact, I have changed. Thank you, Jesus. That is the world. Let 
no man deceive you. In the book of, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you had he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. What is this scripture saying? We were dead sinners, dead in sin. We were doing these things that others are doing. We're doing them. We're living like them. But God, quickened us, caused us our, our dead spirit to rise back to life. For by grace he saved us. Yes, but before then, we were walking according to the pattern of life. Satan arranged for his children in this world. According to the power controlling us, we walk according to that power. Yes, the power of the devil. We were children of disobedience, never hearing God, never listening to God. Yes. And we all lived among these people in the bare houses. We all lived among these people that were, that you lived among the prostitutes. You were hallowed among these drug addicts. You lived among them according as Satan designed the life for them. And you were by nature the children of wrath. Yes. Walk, you were living according to what your mind wanted. According to what your mind cherished. Whatever your mind wants. Whatever your mind decides you were doing. And that puts you into danger. It made you a child of anger. A child of hell. But now, we have been saved. I say we have been saved. We are not among them again. God has delivered you from the kingdom of darkness. God has brought you to his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Marvelous light. God has brought you there. Yes. And God wants people to see you as a new creature. People should come and examine you and praise God. When that child was born, hey, everybody came there. A child has been born. They want to hold the child. They want to see the child. They want to touch the child. So God is saying, now that you're going to attract people to want to see you, you, you're a new creature that God has given birth to. God has refashioned, reformed. For the Bible tells us you are born again. You are now a born again person. What should you do? First, Second Corinthians chapter 5. The Bible tells us in verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18, and all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. So now that you have become born again, remove those old things, sinful property in your life. You never knew before, know it now, that airing is a sin. You never knew before, know it now, that palming is a sin. You never knew before, know it now, that jerichoiling is a sin. Attachment is a sin. Wool is a sin. You never knew it before, know it now. Painting your face is a sin. You never knew it before, know it now. Putting artificial eyelids, eyebrows, or Putting eye pencil, eye anything, eye new creation, new everything is a sin. If you never knew before, knew it, know it now. Painting your lips red, 
Painting your lips any color, any color is a sin. If you never knew it before, know it now. That's what you want to know. All those tight fitting dress in your body. Tight fitting dress. If you never knew it before, know it now. All those set and send some, 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 some gospel, uh, uh, anti gospel preachers, not gospel preachers, because they're not preaching the truth. To come and tell you there's nothing wrong with a woman wearing trousers. There is a woman type of trouser, woman type of what, woman type of anything. So, but if you've never knew it before, know it now. That as a woman to put on trousers is a sin. If you never knew it before, know it now. Woman, all this slimming dress, slimming skirt, it's a sin. If you know how you are causing many to go into, into evil because of your life, because you can't sit properly, you must open up. Your tie comes up alive for people to see, and it troubles men. It disturbs men. It sends many of them into lusting. It makes many of them, not to, for you, they may not come. Maybe you, don't even, you are not beautiful enough for them to, to, to come to you. Maybe you are not qualified for them to come to you, but you provoke them to look for others because of what they have seen. In your love, you provoke them. And you are a sinner because of that tight-fitting skate, that tight-fitting something. You are a sinner. I remember I was preaching in a church. Somebody invited me to preach in a church in Lagos. I came up to the church, and I saw these tight-fitting girls with short skirt. They opened their love like that for me. I said, wonderful. Thank God there was one big pillar that was in the church between me and them. I just came to hide my, my, my face. I, I was like, I, 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 Hallelujah. That is what we're saying. You are causing even men of God to go off. And what is happening in the family? Incest is going on because you're making your brothers, you're making even your father to see your nakedness, see your pant. When you sleep, everything rolls up. You, you never knew before. Dirty life, dirty life, hellish life, hellish life. And that is what the Lord is telling you. Get those things out of your body because you are now a new creature. People want to come and examine you. A child has been born. Hey, people want to come and cherish you. Then, should they see this thing in your life, then what makes you new? God has handled Pharaoh. Now, it is your character in the wilderness. You are to form a character in the wilderness to show a people redeemed by God. Show now a character as you live every day to show you are a child of God. Child of God, no more dreadlocks. Child of God, all this fashionable barbing. Barbing according to style and fashion. Raise up your face. Their names are very many. And you're, 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 you're bab this way, bab this way, draw something in your hair. These things are of the world. They are of the former world. Don't be conformed to them. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Those things, don't, you were thinking they were fantastic. They make you, yo, they identify you truly. They identify you that you belong to the devils. They belong to you. They identify you that you're a child of hell. So, all those barbing style. Now, remove it. Bab like pastor. Bab like pastor. I turn my face around about and see how I bob my hair. That is how you should bob your hair and look reasonable, look decent, look glorious. A child of God that the Lord will be grateful to show, to show you to people. Yes, all those tiny trousers that you're putting on. Tiny trousers that you're putting on, that to pull it up, you are busy struggling, struggling to pull it out. All those things are of the devil. They're not descent of God. Clips where descent dress. When the maniac of Gadara, the madman that was living among the tombs, when he saw Jesus and Jesus delivered him from evil spirits, notable, you could see something change of dressing. He's here, they caught it. Carry that here. Let them cut it. Boy, you hear me? Carry that here. We have, we have a barbing store. Just down that side like that. There's a barbing store. Let them come and put that thing. Let them come and cut up that thing. Because you are not looking at Christian. You are, that, that's a sign of demonism. That's a sign of secret society. That is a sign that you are, you are an arm robber. It's a sign that you are a robber. It's a sign that you are a higher killer. It, it's a sign that you are an agent of the devil. When we see you like that, we say, I'm telling you. And some of these people, they say they are pastors. Pastors of New Generation Church. They, they, they bab punk here. I say, Bishop. Ha <laughs> ha. 
I'm telling you. This one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we will come across those bishops. We say, hey, Bishop, <laughs> Bishop of New Generation, Pastor of New Generation Church. God doesn't know him. He doesn't know God. Ye shall know them by their fruits. They shall know them by their Change those things. That madman, they came to see him dressed and was in his right mind. Woman, you are carrying short skirt because you're not in your right mind. You are carrying those tiny dress in your body. You're not in your right mind. You are exposing your inside because you're not in your right mind. You are in trousers. Even the tear is this way. You are not in your right mind. You are still mad in this world. You're a mad woman on the streets of this life. And some of these mad women are married. Some of these mad women are married. Some of these mad women are married. In fact, some of them have children. They are mad. To come to your right mind. Go and clean your dress. Go and sew new clothes. Go and sew new clothes. Everybody say new clothes. New clothes. Help one another. You sisters, you, this is our new arrival. <laughs> this is our new arrival. Help them. Release your cloth. Good cloth. Clean one. Anointed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Release it to them. Buy new ones. Buy new ones and sew it for them. Yes. If they refuse to wear, then they have not been born again. They are not looking for Jesus. Excuse them from our churches. Where must we go to hell for them? Where must our men go to hell for them? No, get them out from our churches. Hey, no, 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 you won't come here, you won't come here. No, 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 not here, not here. Hey, no, not here, move, 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 hey, move, move, move away, move away. Do like that with them in the units, in the chapters, in the Zoom, everywhere in the state. Send them away. If they are not ready to change. If any man be in Christ a new creature. A new creature is seen by their fruits. Is seen by their fruits. You hear me? You hear me? Say pastor you are speaking to the right man. Pastor you are speaking to the right woman. I came to this place to change. Pastor, you will hear about me that I have changed. I bind that demon who wants to follow you. He won't follow you again. I say he won't follow you again. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Be yet transformed in dress, in your dressing and adornment. Be transformed. Be transformed. Be transformed. In your dressing and in your adornment. Yes. You are not a sinner anymore. You are not a sinner anymore. So you will not dress like a hallowed. In Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10 to 12. You will not dress like a hallowed. You are transformed. You are a child of God. You are born again. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10 to 12. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an hallowed and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. She has an attire, the attire of a hallowed. Hallowed, what is the business of hallowed? Is to attract men to sleep with her. Or attract men to sleep with other people. Attract me to sleep with her. Attract me to sleep with other people because they are doing it communally. So, now, how are you in the attire of a halo? That short skirt is attracting me. That tight skirt that shows your buttocks is attracting me. That trouser you have put on that shows your shape is attracting me. That wear that you're putting on that will show your breast is attracting me. That cloth 
that you put on that shows your chest and your empty back is attracting me. So these are attires of harlotry. They are the dress of harlotry. When I went to South Tommy and Principe, a country in Central Africa, I thought all of them were hallows. Because of the dress. Actually, they, they are supposed to be all hallows. But they say some of them were married people. Eh? Married? What's your husband doing about it? Mom, what are you doing about it? When you find your girl destroying the world like this, Eli, tell me, what are you doing about it? Your daughter is a prostitute in your house. The one that cooks food for you is a prostitute in the, in the, on the, in the society. Prostitute in the church. Like mother, like daughter. How, woman, how are you doing it? That you have your girl a prostitute. The, the gown they saw stopped them at the knees. They can fly and their bodies are. They, what can they do? You have a lady like that that is cooking your food. He said, we have tried. Can you shut up that mouth? Or you want to shut it up in hell? You want to shut up that mouth in hell? Then speak it. Otherwise, have you used all the power of God? Have you used all the wisdom of God? Have you gone for counseling? Have you burnt up all the clothes of that lady and brought new ones to her? If she will not use them, she should leave the house. Do you know that the, the girl you're training for society? After you have sent all of them to hell, will you go to heaven? Is there no just God in heaven? Think it yourself. All these girls, I told you, we were in worry, invited by the Pentecostal, church, Pentecostal uh, PFN, Pentecostal body. And I was, preach, I, I was on top like this. The place looks higher than this. And the people sitting were sitting below me. The choir were made to also sit at the stage. But this short skirt, tight skirt, as they sat, it was like frog that opened the mouth. And the people in the congregation, many people were feasting in that direction. <laughs> you know, some people will be preaching and laughing. You don't know what happened. They have seen something. And they like it. Since they're not preaching against it. Jesus came to that meeting. I mean, Jesus appeared in Revelation and pointed to those people. You see the choir? See the way they are exposed there for my people? Look at that person. That, the, you see him in darkness? Look at that person. Darkness surrounded that person. Darkness around is because of this girl. I'm going to deal with them. I will deal with them. And these are people that fill churches, including pastor's wife. Tie herself and sit, and sit in the pulpit. And then they cross their leg like this. Because sentence against iniquity is not speedily executed. Hence, the children of men, the sons of men have taken it upon themselves to do evil. That is the problem. So, the Lord said, change those things. Change your appearance. Go for no man trousers, young boy. No more shed, not this funny shed with writings that you're not, you don't know about. Listen, I have a dress that is sewn by a house man. When I saw the mark, the vital thing that designed in the pocket, I said, I don't know this thing. I won't wear it. I don't know the letter they are saying there. They are speaking in a language to Satan. Maybe they are saying, Satan, this is a man of God. If you see him, deal with him. And I'll be wearing it. I'll be wearing it. 
Never. I can't wait to have been writing. I don't understand it. That's what I'm saying. Don't be wearing these funny dresses with di- diagram of tiger, diagram of lion, diagram of diagram of this and that. You're carrying that for, the, for what? What is the message? What message are you giving to the world by that type of dress? What are you carrying? What are you advertising? Vehicles have various kind of writings and, and, and pictures because they are advertising something. You, that, that cloth you are wearing, what are you advertising? That's it. So, be careful. Change your dress. Change your dress. Again, I'm telling you, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove the good will of God, so that you might be accepted by God, so that you might be perfect in the sight of God. I talk about dressing, I talk about worldly passion. Worldly passion. In the book of First John, Chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I read verse 15 to 17. The Bible tells us here saying. Yeah. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world. The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. The world here refers to the system organized by Satan. Full of alluring things. Attractive things meant to turn man from God, meant to make man comfortable with Satan, meant to replace the desire of God in man. That is the world. There are things this world has, sinful things. Don't love those things. Don't love those things. What does the Bible say? The lust of the flesh. Satan wants you just to eat and enjoy and be, op- and be okay. Like in the days of Noah, there was feasting, eating, drinking, not minding God. If you go now, you find many people in boots, drinking boots, drinking bars, hotels, and various places, drinking, eat pepper soup, eat this, eat that. God is not inside. Their mind is not even thinking of God. That is the world. It gives the flesh pleasure that you sit among others, not for to satisfy hunger, no. Sit among others, chat, gist. Then you eat, you drink, bring more, bring more. Love not the world. Don't love to be among them. Don't love to join them. Don't love to be like them. Love not the world. Yeah. What is that? Committing sexual immorality. This is what is going on in the world now. Human beings are gradually descending to the level of dogs. Human beings. If you see how we cherish the woman before, When we grew up, how we cherish the woman. How we cherish the woman. At at that time, the woman knew how to keep her body. You will not see 
anything naked about her. And we cherished her greatly. But now, the glory of the woman has been removed. Not the godly woman. I'm talking about the woman in the society. The woman God made his glory. The woman is, is decaying. The woman is reducing herself to, to the level of dogs on the street. Anybody can have her. Anybody can take her to the corner of the street and she's ready to open up there. I'm talking about the woman. That is how common is commonized now. And she is the one looking fast after me. She's the one sending out, I am here, here's my number. She's the one doing these things now. People, it has fallen to that level. In fact, it's not even for money for, to satisfy herself now. She's the one calling for people. I, I, and the men say, we're ready. We're ready. They are also there, at moving like dogs. They have, re, they have reduced the dignity of human creature. They have reduced the dignity of human creature. Even dogs can now watch human beings. We, it is dogs we used to watch in the open air, but now dogs can watch human beings. You can see how much it has come. Love not the world. This is what gives the world pleasure. Young men, that is what they're looking for. That is what every boy wants to marry now, 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 now. God, if you don't give me a wife now, now I will backslide. Jesus, uh, if you allow this year to pass, I will backslide. Give me his phone. <laughs> These people. I'm telling you, it's because of the flesh. It's because of the flesh. When a woman's cake sells so fast, if they don't get it, she doesn't allow them to fry well. Because people are looking for it. People are looking for it. Because of your flesh, you, can, you don't allow maturity anymore. You don't allow maturity anymore. You don't allow yourself to settle well anymore because the flesh is tightening you. Go, 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 go. Love not the world. Don't be like others in the world. Change your mind. Change your mind. You can stay without meeting a man. For there are people that have stayed. Han Anna in the Bible, a widow, she got married after seven years. The husband died and she remained unmarried until she was 84. Did you hear that a sickness caught her? Did you hear that a sickness caught her? Paul the apostle didn't marry. I think he died at 60, either 64 or 61. Did any sickness catch him? No. He was normal. He was healthy. He said, I wish you were like me altogether. Not bothering about marriage. So God can keep your life. God can control your life. But you're thinking a wrong thought. Somebody has injected an evil thought to you. Hey, if you don't sleep with a woman, your stomach will swell. If you don't sleep with a woman, you won't know how to urinate again. If you don't sleep with a man, hey, fibroid will come. It's a lie. Lie from the devil that wants to kill everybody. That's a lie. Everybody says it's a lie. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm laughing because I was telling somebody that hearing was bad. And he said, if hearing was bad, this machine would have told me. <laughs> machine. See, because machine dictates anything that is wrong, that human beings should not use because of your health, that if he heard it was a bad thing, machine would have told him. Maybe machine was the one who told you that, hey, if you don't sleep with a man, if you don't sleep with a woman, this one will happen in your body. The machine is a liar. That machine is a lie. So don't listen to it. Don't listen to the doctor's advice. Because people have lived by faith in God and the Lord has kept them. God has kept them. Where are the days of virginity? Where the days of young men staying without marriage, without marriage, until they married. Where are that day? Where are, where are those days? Yes, where are they? I stayed until I married. Nothing happened to me. I never knew a woman. What about that? Where are those people now that they're deceiving you? You're corrupting people. They're corrupting yourself. God cannot find holy people to use. God cannot find righteous children to use. Immorality has carried, carried them away. Carried them away. No, no virgin anymore. If the woman said it's a virgin, you laugh at her. Say, hey, look at you. Oh, I, I look at you. Up to now, look at you. Shame on you. So you're saying shame to a, a glorious woman like that. 
because of the corruption of the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The things that are in the world, the lust of the flesh, your flesh. Ah, you want to smoke cigarette. Your body wants it. Your body wants it. Go and smoke. Go and take drugs. Go and take drugs. Go and take drugs. cocaine. Go and take this. Take this one. Take this one. My body. My body. My body. Your body. Body is for hell. <laughs> that body is telling you, I am for hell. Those things you are eating, drinking, smoking are for hell. Body wants alcohol. Body wants this. Body wants to sleep with a woman. Body wants to lie with a woman, man. All, and to ma man and man, women and women. Yes. Ha. Huh. A boy was caught here. Is it yesterday? That wanted, a boy of about, is it? Did they say he was 25 or what? As they were sleeping in the hostel over there, in the school, got a nine-year-old boy and was penetrating through his anus. Thank God, the boy shouted. The boy came and repent, report, reported him, and they traced him and got him. He said, somebody did it like that to me when I was young, and a spirit passed to me. So now, I just want to be doing, I'm be passing the same spirit. I said, they should send that boy home. If he wants deliverance, after everybody has gone, let him come his own. So that he doesn't contaminate anybody. And he should never come to our conference until such a thing is treated in his life. So that wanting to save him should not cause the death of others. Wanting to deliver him should not cause the bondage of others. That's what I'm saying. This is what is going on in the world. And they attach money, riches to it. Now you are a homo homo homosexual. You go to rich men to, to sleep with your anus. And collect money because that the devil has attached fame to it, wealth to it, celebrity to it, attach everything. Maybe the fathers also. Whatever it is, they're doing like that to you. Corruption, corruption. That is, and they're multiplying. They are multiplying. What about lesbianism? Woman to woman. And these are evil spirits defiling your life, taking you to hell. And you are doing this to mature woman, even married woman for that matter. He said, come and touch me. Come and touch me. Let's touch ourselves. Jesus, cleanse this place from these people. Jesus, cleanse this place from these people. Jesus, cleanse this place from these people. In the name of Jesus. And if these things are in your life, come and report yourself for prayer. Genuine prayer. To break that yoke. To get that devil out of your life. To set you free. Otherwise, you are a beast. Yeah, the devil has turned you to a beast. You are not living in the realm of man. Whatever you are doing, you are a field in the society. A field before God. You are dirty. You are dirty. You are dirty. I'm telling you, the Lord wants to cleanse you. Report yourself. Confess your sins. He that confesseth his sin shall have mercy. Don't hide it. He that hideth his sin shall not prosper. Don't hide it. Come and confess it. Plead with God for your salvation. And you who masturbate, <clears throat> you who masturbate, plead that God may forgive you and change you and send away that spirit from your life. Cry. Come and report yourself. Come and seek prayer that you might be delivered and come to your right mind. That you might be delivered and have your name written in the book of life. That's what we're saying, the lust of the flesh. And then the lust of the eye which include pursuit after beauty. Beautiful persons, beautiful things. Desire to possess material things. I want this, and that leads to covetousness. You want this, you want this. You want this, you want this. You want this, I want this. I want this one, I want this one. Lost of the eye. Whatever you see in people, I want to have my own. I want to have my own. You saw this person with this cloth, I want to have it. What's the name of that cloth? What is the name of that cloth? And that's how women are busy looking at the ages of cloth of one another in the church bondage. Not clean dressing anymore. It's you want to spread fashion. You want to see fashion. You want to have that line, <clears throat> that type. Lust of the flesh. Again, the pride of life. 
which include desire to be great, the love of money, pursuit, pursuit of honor, desire to be identified with great men, to ride great cars, to be, behave big in the society, behave great. That is your desire. The Bible tells us. These things are not of the Father. They don't come from God. They make you restless. They make you struggle. They make you push others down. They make you envy. Envy others. They make you covetous in love. They make you restless in love. The Bible says these things are not of the Father. But they are of the world. And the world passeth away. And the lust of them. The world passeth away. And all these things. The world passeth away. And all these things. The president, the, just, the, 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 the president that just finished his term this year has gone. And he has climbed up to the highest position in the, in the country. No other position is like it. Yet he's not satisfied. He's not. To tell you that life, a man's life, does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. A man's life does not consist in the, in the position he occupies. A man's life does not consist in the honor of men that are given to him. A man's life does not consist in the amount of women he has available for his body. Solomon had 700 with 300 concubines. And at the end he said, vanity of vanity. Women are vanity. It's vexation of spirit. Making me not to have rest. I can't sit down. This woman says, it's my turn. You didn't come. What happened? This one says, it's my turn. It didn't come. What happened? <laughs> a man was saying that the, it's terrible to marry two wives because the politics of it is very difficult. He said, he called one of the wives and said, take this cloth. I, you know I love you specially. Don't tell the other one. It's because of you. So, take it. I know I won't tell her. I won't tell her. He said he has played politics. I've got it this one. When trouble came between the two of them, the woman that received special gift from the husband say, brought it out and said, see this. Did you have it? Bring your own. Let me see. If this man really loves you as he loves me, go and bring your own. <laughs> Do you know what he tells me in the secret? He's just managing with you here. He's just managing with you. And both of us are managing with you. Then this one came and got hold of him. Eh, so it is me you're managing here? He said, eh, eh, eh. So how will you play the politics? It's a terrible thing. I'm telling you. Come to Christ and have peace. Follow the truth and have rest in your life. And rest. Your family will rest. Your people will rest. Jumping up and down for girlfriend. That girlfriend there. That girlfriend there. That boyfriend there, that boy. He said, I'm gathering them because I don't know which one will marry me. That's not the method of marriage. That is not the method of Christian marriage. That is not the method. You will be confused in lie. God's hand will not be there sleeping with A and B. God's hand is not with you. So, these things are not of the Father. God hates them. He hates them. He hates them. That's what I'm telling you. God hates them. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to 19. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to 19. The Bible tells us, saying, These six things that the Lord hate, yeah, seven, are an abomination unto him. A proud look. You look proud. Why are you looking proud? You took cocaine. Okay? You took drugs. And drugs have deceived you and promoted you high. You're on top of a tree. So everybody else is down. You look like this. You're under divine hatred. You're under divine hatred. A proud look. What makes you to be looking proud? 
What makes you to be looking gray for certificate or money or position you occupy or natural gifts? What's your reason? God hates it. These six things that the Lord hates, yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue. That is what you see in the world. Love not the world. They live by lying. And a lying tongue is but for a moment. Your sin shall find you out. And lie will drain you off of glory. When they discover you, how can they believe you? Even when you're telling the truth, it will take you time to tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth, before they believe that you can tell truth. And there was that lie. They have discovered in you, have removed their, their interest in your life, their confidence. Lying destroys people's confidence in your life. A lying wife does not have the confidence of the husband. How will he know that the money really finished, the one he gave you, that you are not lying? A lying husband does not have confidence in, his, in, his, in her husband. How will you know that the lady you are, you are standing with the other side is actually a relation of yours? And not just lies you're telling. So God hates lies. He hates lies. He hates lies. A lying tongue. And again the Bible says, yes, and, hand, I mean, and hands that shed innocent blood. You kill, you kill people. Just because you want to steal their money, you kill them. Wicked man, wicked boy. You learn wickedness from the devil. They carry you to the realm of darkness and train you on wickedness. The law hates you. The creator hates you. The property of creation hates you. Everybody, the world, the animals, living things, non-living things, hate you because the creator hates you. You're killing people. You're shedding blood for yourself, for an organization, for a man that chattered you. Who are you? You created those people? Why are you killing them? Who gave you the right? Wait, he that killed by his sword shall die by sword. Are you greater than being killed? Hell is waiting for you. If you don't value your life, you will go and see the worth of your life that you missed when you enter hell. When you enter hell, where a he hell, even Satan himself will be looking pitiful when his own time comes because he will be looking for mercy, but there will be no mercy for him. You don't know the value of your life. You want to waste your life on earth to be killing people, shedding innocent blood, causing abortion, aborting your children, aborting the people the Lord gave you. Yes, that is what the Lord is telling you. He hates that. He hates that. He hates that. And heart that devised wicked imaginations. Your heart is always thinking evil. You're here, you're only planning. What do I do? Yes, the last day is Friday. What do I do? How do we get it? We have not yet gotten anything yet. What are we going to get? You are doing your hands like this. You are thinking, you are planning. Wicked man! Wicked boy! Your creator hates you. Creator hates you. Angels, all together with him. Together with everyone. That everyone the Lord makes is hating you. Because you are wicked. You have a bad heart. Your heart is imagining evil. Your heart is planning evil. Abominable heart. Wicked heart, evil heart. God hates it. God hates it. God hates it. These six things that the Lord hates, yeah, seven, abomination unto him. Abomination unto him. And heart that devises wicked imagination. Feet that be swift to run. Be swift in running to mischief. The reason why you left Lagos to this place is to come and steal. Because you have heard that there's going to be a conference. Multitudes shall gather there. The reason why you came from the city to this place is because you're coming to steal. Steal people's phone. Steal these people's money. Steal this. Boy, the fire of God is on you. Judgment of God is on you. Judgment of God is on you. Judgment of God is upon you. Judgment of God is upon you. The Lord hates you. The Lord hates you. He hates those things. He hates those things you're doing. How could you sit down and be planning, running to and fro to do evil? 
traveling all the way from where you are to this place, from place to another place, just for evil, to cause confusion in the world God has made. He said he hates it. He hates those things. He hates those things that you're doing what God hates. You're wearing hatred in your life. That is what the Lord says. Hand, feet that are swift in doing evil. You say, ah, yes, God doesn't hate a sinner. He hates the work he does. A wicked man is an abomination before God. Your hands join in heart. God, the wicked shall not go upon us. God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked every day. You have made God angry enough. That's why you, you need to settle with him now. You need to settle with God now. You have made him angry enough. You have made God angry enough. It's patience that is keeping you. If, you, if the Lord closes his hand like that, you're gone. Hell straight. You will not come back. A billion years you will be there. So it's time to settle with God. Six things the Lord hates. Feet that are swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. They brought you into a matter. To know the truth of it, you are coming to tell lies. Because you want to deliver a guilty man. You want to deliver an evil man. It's your friend. It's your father. It's your relation. It's your neighbor. Or it's what? Or else you tell lies against the innocent. Just to trouble his life. You tell lie against him. So that they can imprison him. So that they can charge him. They can see him as evil man. He didn't pregnant you. You say he was the one that pregnanted you. You say he was the one. A story was told of this man of God. It was said it was Dick, the writer of Dick's Bible. A kind-hearted Christian but was ignorant of the wickedness of the society in, in the part, but because he should have known. Or else the Lord wanted us to learn lessons in life. He was going from his city to a next place, and a young girl stopped him. Give me leave, give me leave. And that compassionate heart, he picked the lady. And so as he reached where the lady was to stop, the lady said, I'm dropping here. So she, he parked. And say, okay, go down. The lady said, then give me my money. Which money? Uh -uh. You picked me and went and used me and came to drop me like that. No, you must give me my money. That's how the lady grabbed him there. Wonderful to tell the world that this righteous man, that the Lord has used him to write a Bible, a commentary, standard commentary, is an adulterer, demon sponsored. The Lord hates you. The Lord hates you. I said, 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 the Lord hates you. Yes, you are an abomination to God that are telling lies over his servants, lies over the innocent, giving bad witness, bad thing, just to bring a bad name upon them. That's what the Lord is saying. These six things does the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are abomination unto him. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. He that soweth discord, he would tell A this and tell B that and knock their heads. You like it? You are abomination. You are evil. You are wicked. God hates you. God hates what you are doing. You are, God is angry with you. So these things, you are supposed to stop them now. Your life must change from them. I say your life must change from them. I say your life must change from them. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Finally, identifying with lukewarm or dead church. Revelation chapter 3. I read verse 1. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 1, the Bible tells us, saying, Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write, This thing said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, 
but at day. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 to 16. Verse 14 to 16. Unto the church of, unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, rise. This thing said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You see, and this characterize majorly the churches that are in the world. Dead churches. Lukewarm churches. Yes, the Bible is warning you, warning you, be careful with these churches. You go to serve God. God is not in many of them. God is not in many of them. God is not in many of them. Whatever title they go by, God is not in many of them. They teach the Bible in some parts as a camouflage. But God is not there. Their interpretation is different. They give you different interpretation. Now, the doctrine that is taking over the world is the, the abuse of the grace of God. They call it the doctrine of grace. It's by grace. You find a man who says he's a sinner, I mean, he's a Christian, committing sin. You're sinning, say, well, who, who, who can live by himself? It's by the grace of God. I'm going to heaven by grace. You are talking to say, you are a drunkard. Why do you say you are a drunkard? He said, don't judge me. You're judging me. It's by grace we are saved. I gave my life to Christ in 1973. And I'm living by grace. For since that time, grace has been keeping me. And I will make heaven before you. Grace. Grace, grace, I see grace. Deceitful gospel. That tells you you can commit sin. That the grace of God is sufficient. The Bible says, shall we continue to sin? That grace may abound. And they're deceiving you. Telling you that don't mind. Don't mind. Don't allow those people to be troubling you with holiness. They're troubling you with hell. They're disturbing your conscience. It is by grace we're living. It, you're not going to heaven by grace. But by truth. You are not going to heaven by grace. But by what? Jesus said, I am the way. Then Jesus is what? Then Jesus is what again? Three things, grace is not inside. The way, the truth, and the life. This form Jesus, and grace is not inside it. Did Jesus ever say, I'm grace? Did he say, I am grace? I am truth. But Jesus brought grace and truth. Why? Because to do the truth, you need help. Grace is the help that you need to do the truth. But the truth is what you need to do to have the life. That is it. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has, ar has, ar has arrived unto us, has come unto us, and Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this world. The grace presents truth. The grace presents truth. And promises I will help you if you are ready to do the truth. That's grace. Grace itself is not truth. But Jesus is truth. I am the way, I am the truth. Grace is the help that came without your effort that brought you the truth so you can practice it and go to heaven. 
Grace is the help you need to pray. You need when you pray to God to help you practice his truth so that you can go to heaven. But you don't go to heaven by grace. No, you go to heaven by truth. Grace is like spices that you put in, in food to make it palatable so you can eat. But spices themselves are not food. Are they food? Can somebody cut onions and say, I've been living by onion? You will not. Or just be taking pepper. I'm living by pepper. It will not work. Or I just live by salt. I live by salt. It will not work. The only help to season food, make it palat palatable so you can eat, it is the food, the carbohydrate, the protein, the uh, various kind of composition that gives your body the build up. The season helps to make you eat it in. Grace is the lift in a strike crapper. High story building that makes you go to the top of it. It can take you to, to uh, floor 7, floor 8, 10, floor 20, floor 40, which you couldn't have been able. Just enter the lift. The lift will help you to reach there. But you get it now? The place you need to sleep, is it the lift or the room? Is it the lift you sleep in? The lift helps you to say, okay, you can enter your room. Grace now helps you and say, now you can do the truth. It is the truth that gives eternal life. But, and the truth, what is truth? Thy word is truth. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the truth. It is Jesus that gives eternal life. Hence, it is the word of truth that gives eternal life. Paul said, I am called to preach the word. And it is this word that brings forth godliness. Grace is the mercy of God that keeps you alive so that you can hear the truth and be saved. Grace itself cannot take you to heaven without truth. What really matters is truth. What really matters is truth. But these people have told you, don't mind. When they want to commit immorality with you, say, don't mind, it's the grace of God. In fact, another one says, God is you who count these things sin. God doesn't see sin in you. All the sin is in Jesus. Jesus has paid for all sins. So the one we're doing now, it's not, it's not counted sin. As for sin, it is settled in Jesus. That's what they're telling you. They spoil you. Run away from such places. Otherwise, they are meant to take you to hell. Look for the truth. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 22, Flee also youthful loss, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Look for a church like that. That call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Not corrupt heart. Not sinful heart. With sincere heart. Serve the Lord among them. And Paul said in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 9. Philippians chapter 4, verse 9, he says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. These preachers that are saying only grace is Paul committing sin. He was the one that talks about grace. He talked much about the grace of God. But was he sinning? See what he said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. 1 Thessalonians 
chapter 2, verse 10. Ye are witnesses. And God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. How will you not say the one who preaches grace means that you can commit sin and that you will still make it to heaven? No. The soul that sinned, it shall die. If I say to a righteous man, you will live and he trusts in his own righteousness and commits sin. For the sin he has committed, he shall die. All his righteousnesses that he has done shall be forgotten. But for that sin that he commits, that shall he die. He that is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. If you remain in Christ, you will never sin. If you station yourself in Christ, keep on holding Christ, firmly to Christ, sin will be far away from your life. But when you are committing sin, he that sinned has not known him. He that sinned has not known him. That's what the Bible is saying. You're living in sin. You say you're a pastor. You're living in sin. You say you are a, 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 a bishop. You are a, an evangelist. You're living in sin. You have not known God. You have not. They're just deceiving you. You have never known God. Because Jesus came for sin. To destroy sin in the flesh and plant righteousness. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Henceforth we should not live in sin. But these corrupt churches, in their prayers, they say, God, if it is because of my sin that you will not hear this prayer, forgive me of my sin. That is conditional prayer. It's conditional. If is there, it's the prayer of a sinner that is not ready to repent. And God does not hear the prayer of sinners. My brethren, I'm just trying to say you are in the right place. That the word of righteousness, the clean word, the word that convicts, the word that purges, wherewith thou shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto unto thy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. Who is a fool? A fool is the one that does not know how to make it. He doesn't know the way. He's struggling. He's, he doesn't know the way. He doesn't know the truth. He's a fool. He doesn't know the way. How are you following a fool? What are you going to learn from a fool? Your soul is valuable. Your soul is valuable. Your soul is valuable. And some of you will say, it is the church of my father. Have you heard that in the real world? That somebody, your sickness, <coughs> your village, no hospital in your village can handle it. So move to this other place and no, it's only my village hospital. It's only first Peter in my village I can attend to. Anyone outside? No. Have you had a man like that? If for just this body, men look for where they can be healed. You don't value your soul to look for where you can have salvation, to look for where you can have heaven. The Lord give you understanding. Let's rise up upon our feet and thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. The Lord give you understanding. Because your soul is valuable. Your soul is costly. Your soul is valuable. Your soul is costly. Look for salvation for it. Look for where you will find salvation. Cherish your coming to this place. Cherish the preacher you are listening to. Cherish the grace that brought you here. It was grace that brought you to learn the truth for salvation. For eternal life. Make right choices for yourself. Make right choices for yourself. Make
Make right choices for your soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, teach me your word. Lord, teach me your word. I want to know your word. God, teach me your word. God, teach me your word. I want to know your word. Father, teach me. I want to know your word. My God. I want to do your work. I want to practice it, Lord. My God. God, teach me your way. to know your way. I want to follow it. I want to walk by it, Lord. My God. I want to follow it. Your way is right. My God, I want to know your way. God, teach me your way. God, teach me your way. I want to follow your way. Jesus, teach me. Jesus, teach me, Lord, my God. God, teach me your will. Teach me your will. I want to know your will. God, teach me your will. God, teach me your will. I want to know your will. My God, teach me. I want to do your will. My God. I want to do your will. I love your will. Not mine. I want to do your will. Not my own will, 
my God. Amen. Tell the Lord so. Teach me your will. Teach me your word. Teach me your way. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.
believe in you You are the living Savior I believe in you, believe you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. Chased me with your blood. You are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin. I believe in you Cause you are my Lord and Savior You are my Lord and Savior Jesus, I believe in you I believe in you, Lord Cause you are the living Savior Jesus, I believe I believe